Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. In this video, I wanted to outline how I am planning to build the Elemental Hit, Elemental Equilibrium, Tri-Elemental, uh, Deadeye Minor character, that I'm going to be league starting in 3.9. Now that's a hell of a mouthful to say, uh, so just call it the Elemental Hit Deadeye if you want, for short. And the way that this character is built... It is focused around two key things on the passive trait. The first one is you want to scale up the, the ability of your mines by taking nodes like Clever Construction, Devastating Devices, High Explosives, uh, Volatile Mines, and several others on the passive trait, uh, Saboteur. The purpose of these nodes is that they cause any skill that you link to, a mine, uh, to mine support or any skill that is inherently a mine to become better than it otherwise would be. The second thing that you're going to do is stack lots of things that affect bows, but that affect more than one element at once. So we're going to be looking for things that increase projectile damage. We're going to be looking for things that increase elemental damage. And third, we're also going to stack life. And fourth, we're going to stack critical strike multiplier and critical strike chance. So going through some of the, uh, the passive tree that you can see here, uh, hopefully this gives a bit of a sense of where uh, of the overall structure of the tree and it will make a link to the path of building download for this there will be some slight changes for this tree in three point uh, in patch 3.9 uh, but nothing particularly significant and a key thing that is very important elemental equilibrium is the furthest node away from your starting point however you do want to rush it a little bit i'll leave it up to you exactly what order you take nodes in uh, but I would suggest that you aim to have Elemental Equilibrium by about level 70 or 75 at the latest. The reason for that is that when monsters start taking two or more hits to kill, Elemental Equilibrium will cause your damage output to just explode. Secondly, let's talk skills. The most important skill links, and you can see I'm only using a Tabula Rasa here, the most important skills that you have. Elemental Hit is the core skill that you're using. Elemental Hit is actually taking a, an 18% damage nerf in 3.9. However, if you've watched my video of clearing a, an 8 mod tier 16 in dumpster tier gear with this build, you'll get a bit of a sense that that doesn't really matter that much. The damage is there. What Elemental Hit does is it picks at random one of fire, lightning, or cold. It then makes an attack using your attached weapon. So in our case, this is a bow and deals a certain amount of damage of each element. However, it ignores all damage that isn't of the chosen element. So for most cases, this means that if it chooses fire, it deals 590 to 1096 fire damage. The added cold, the cold and lightning damage sections there don't really kick in in normal gameplay, uh, although there are ways that people can build around elemental hit to get some value out of those as well. We won't get into that though, that's a different elemental hit build entirely. So basically it picks one of the three, 590 to 1096 fire, 480 to, the, to 896 cold, or 95 to 1802 lightning. And it deals that damage on that here. And this is then modified by your support gems as normal. Uh, support gems that we're using, elemental damage with attacks. This tremendously increases the damage output of the skill. Uh, it's, it also has a strictly better version available in the new uh, Conquerors of, of the Atlas content as well. If you can get your hands on an Awakened Elemental Damage with Attack Support, you should immediately use it because it's just better. I'm going to attach it to Charged Mind Support. Charged Mind Support does two key things. Firstly, it generates lots of power and frenzy charges for you, which is great. But secondly, and more importantly, it grants you both Critical Strike Multiplier and mine throwing speed based upon the number of charges you have. Uh, most importantly of all is that mine throwing speed is a massive multiplier for the damage output of your skill. So you definitely want this and you want it to be higher than level 10. I'm using a level 10 gem because I repurposed an existing standard character to give this preview. Last chain mine support is the thing that turns elemental hit into a mine. So if you didn't have this attached, uh, your your elemental hit would just be fired manually from a bow and it would look somewhat like an automatic attack. So let's just demonstrate that. Uh, it's, you can see there that it's just firing one attack at a time 
and changing elements. Blast Chain Mine transforms the skill, making it so that instead of firing directly, you conjure one mine. We'll start with one because you do get more than that, but one is the default. That then will cast, will make that attack for you. It will then originate from the mine instead of from you. Blast Chain Mine support is then modified by Minefield support. Minefield support causes the skill to throw five mines instead of one. However, at the cost of a massive decrease in mine throwing speed. However, all that said, it's still absolutely worth using. You're getting five times the number of mines out, and it's taking you, uh, it's, it's taking you approximately. So it's it's for every one second that it takes now, it will take 370 milliseconds without this this support gem. Uh, basically, it still is an absolutely massive increase in damage. And it only gets better as you go from level 8 up to a level 20, or better yet, 21 minefield support. Lastly, we have trap and mine damage support. This is one of those silly skill gems that is just a more multiplier, but oh my god, it is a big more multiplier. And it's one that you just can't go without. One of the key things with this skill is that in order to use elemental hit to its maximum effectiveness, you want things that can scale all versions of it so you want things that will that will work well when it deals when it chooses to deal cold damage when it chooses to deal fire and when it chooses to deal uh lightning and that's why trap and mine damage support is so good in fact it's why also blast uh, the whole concept of going mines is so good it gives you three support gems that, oh sorry it gives you really four support gems all of which amp up the damage of elemental hit whatever is picked Whereas most other supports, with the exception of elemental damage with attacks, most of them don't work for every single type of uh, damage elemental hit could do. In terms of other things that we're doing, uh, our reservations, we're using summon skitterbots because skitterbots are awesome, even though they're getting a little bit of a nerf. And we are using war banner because war banner just provides accuracy at a very low cost. And we are using Precision because Precision provides both accuracy and critical strike chance. And ultimately, we are a critical strike build. Uh, from a golem perspective, you can use an Ice Golem if you want. An Ice Golem will grant you critical strike chance and accuracy, which is great. Uh, you can alternately use a Lightning Golem instead. Lightning Golem will grant you attack speed. Or alternately, you can use a Fire Golem, which will grant you damage. A or you can choose not to go with a damaging golem, you can go with a stone golem which will grant you life regen, or a chaos golem which will grant you a little bit of resilience against physical hits. Uh, or alternately you can choose to go for no golem at all if you would prefer to be more resilient to any enemy attacks that try to, uh, that try to chain. In terms, of, uh, in terms of gearing the character, the most important thing to do is to find a bow and use a prismatic fossil on it and keep using prismatic fossils, you'll need a bow that is item level 75 or higher to roll this, to roll that first subterranean modifier. Now you'll notice here that it's 80 to 120% increased elemental damage. It is not going to be as high as that in 3.9, it is being nerfed. However, uh, it's, it's a pretty common roll, and it is still insanely high in the 3.9 world as well. So where I'm using a version of the mod that caps out at 120%, the new version of the mod will cap out at 94%. However, it will still be extremely strong. There will also be a 100% roll that you can roll just normally on, the, on a bow as well. In addition to that, we have that very important line at the bottom, 22% increased mine throwing speed, and we have that 36% increased global critical strike multiplier. You'll notice that I haven't six linked this bow, and that it's not, uh, and that I'm actually not using, not gaining anything from the fact that it's a shaper bow. Uh, the only reason I'm using a shaper bow here is just because it's what I happen to have in standard. Uh, I tend to vendor or not pick up all of the uh, imperial bows that drop. Additionally, you don't want to use an imperial bow either. You want to use one of the ones that has a uh, that has maximum critical strike chance. So look for bows that have 6.5% critical strike chance or higher and use one of those instead of this silly bow that is just what I happen to have. From a ring's perspective, you'll notice I'm using Stormfire, this uh, unique ring. That is just because it is elemental. It is an opal ring that has some resists on it. Uh, it is not important that it is Stormfire at all. In fact, this would be better off as a life and resist ring. Uh, 
Uh, this is just a life and resist and critical strike chance ring. And this is a life and, uh, life and resist amulet at the moment. You could do much better by replacing these with rings that have a decent tier of increased elemental, dam uh, elemental damage with attacks and that have uh, better that have better life and resistances than the ones that I'm using. Uh, additionally, this quiver is pretty strong. You may not be able to find a quiver as strong as this early on in the league, but you can certainly make do with anything that is just a life and resist and elemental damage with attack skills. You scale a lot from that stat. Elemental damage with attack skills is good for any bow, for any bow build that uses elemental skills a lot, uh, but it is extraordinarily good for elemental hit, where a lot of other sources just don't work very well. Boots, just a rare item with a life and resist. Belt is just a rare item with a life and resist, and this is not a particularly good one at all. You can do much better than this, get a lot more damage on it. Uh, these gloves are terrible, they're just, they're life and resist on this character. They were a bit better on this character's previous incarnation. From a chess perspective, if you can get a bow that is six linked, then at that point, ditch tabula, go for a defensive chest. Uh, you could even use Count's Heart because you're not doing very much with your with your links. So if you can get a six link in your bow, then you could use Count's Heart as a as a really durable item uh, that'll give you a lot of survivability. Alternately, if you don't want to go with Count's Heart, uh, there's plenty of other uh, plenty of other armors that you could use, whether they be rare or unique. Either will work. From a helmet perspective, uh, depending upon the exact setup of stats that you have you may end up finding that your best helmet choice is a rare helmet. Or alternately, if you've got a lot more dexterity than normal for this build, then you could even consider going with the Fractal Thoughts unique helmet. Fractal Thoughts is kind of awesome. Uh, anyways, uh, your flasks are the last thing I'd point out. Uh, I'm using pretty dumpster tier ones at the moment. Dying Sun is your end game goal. I wasn't relying upon it in those maps that I was running before, but oh my god, will it make your character so much more powerful if you can afford it. I do expect that Dying Sun will be very rare and very coveted in the Metamorph League, however. Uh, the days of picking up a Dying Sun for 50 Chaos are over, unfortunately. I've got a feeling that it might be a 10 Exalt Flask, and so that will put it out of the price range of many a player. Uh, if that's the case, don't worry. You can start out with just a Life Flask, a Diamond Flask. In fact, this is just an ample Diamond Flask at the moment. Uh, and just two, ver uh, just two good old Quicksilver flasks to begin with. Uh, ultimately, though, the best option that you've got here, and this would be an expensive choice, is to pick up a Wise Oak and Triple Balance it. What the Wise Oak does is it provides you boost to elemental penetration and to uh, add a buff to your resilience against elemental damage. And that is best when all three of your uncapped resistances, which is not the actual resist number, but it's number in the brackets, which is what it would be without the caps. Uh, if those three are all the same as each other, then suddenly uh, Wise Oak becomes absolutely incredible. If you can try, if you can try balance your resists, then Wise Oak will be the best in slot flask for your character. But there's plenty of other options as well. And I'm sure that you'll be able to find lots to go with the character as you as you sort of develop it. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away. Um, otherwise, I will post a link to a path of building for this draft of the character. It will certainly change. I don't expect that the way that I play it will be exactly the same as, um, as you see here when I'm actually doing it in the Metamorph League. I'll adapt it to the circumstances. I do intend to stay with Deadeye, and in fact I should probably showcase the choices that were made in the Deadeye as well, uh, within the Ascendancy before closing up. So you're going to pick up Gathering Winds, uh, Tailwind is just incredible, you're going to pick up Far Shot and Ricochet. Now I, a lot of people will disagree with me on this, I like to take Far Shot first and Ricochet second on a, when levelling a Deadeye, because Ricochet is just so powerful that when you pick it up in the Cruel Labyrinth, you suddenly become a god. Lots of people will disagree and say, grab Tailwind first. Uh, the choice is entirely up to you. Uh, Fast and Deadly is a great choice too, and you'll be basically happy with every single one of your Labyrinths, except for the one that you take Fast Shot on. Fast Shot will feel a bit underwhelming, but everything else will feel incredible when you pick it up. Anyways, uh, 
definitely fire away with your questions, and I hope you have a good one.